All right, so this video is going to show you how to take columns of data. I mean, the first thing I'm going to show you is how to put them into a histogram and then kind of modify that histogram to make it look like what you might want it to look like instead. Uh, and the other thing we're going to talk about is confidence intervals. So let's first talk about that histogram. So let's say I have a Likert response data here, um, which means I have answers of one through five where one corresponds to strongly disagree and five corresponds to strongly agree. And I want to make a histogram showing how many ones through fives I got. So this is something we've done before. Uh, so I'm going to go into data analysis and I'm going to make my histogram. But before I do that, it's always going to ask me for bins. So I'm going to type my bins right there. And then I'm going to do data analysis, histogram. My input range is going to be my Likert responses. And then my bin range. Uh, that pen thing will go away. Come on. There we go. Um, sorry about that. And then my bin range is up here. Not there. What's happening? My bin range is up here. Come on. Sorry, guys. And I do have labels, and I want to output it right next to the bins with a chart. And there we go. There is my histogram. So I've got a nice little histogram here. No big deal. But the problem is, is I see one, two, three, four, five here. And I really want this to say strongly disagree to strongly agree. So what you can do is you can take that data. I am going to delete this histogram because I don't really want it. And up here, I'm going to say strongly disagree, which corresponds with a uh, a value of one, there were eight of those. And then disagree, which is two, I had seven. And then neutral, I had two. And then agree, I had six. And then strongly agree, I had seven. Then what you can do from here is highlight this data, go to insert, column, 2D column, and there you go. Now I have better labels on the bottom. Now what I don't have is I don't have axes titles, nor do I have a uh, title on top of the graph. So I would make sure to go in here, go to my layout, give my horizontal title below an axis, and down here I'd say something about Likert response. And then for my whole vertical axis, this would be the frequency. Oops, pardon me. This would be the frequency, come on, of the responses. And then I'd also need a chart title because that's important. And I'd say responses to statement number four or whatever statement this happened to be from the survey. If you want, you could do more with that. Um, and try to capture like a, a snapshot of what that statement happened to be, or you can just say responses to statement number four, but you need a title of some kind. So this is very quickly how you can get your responses in here. The reason this is nice is let's say I wanted to do that same thing, but I want to do it for weekly income. What I could do is I could create bins, get a frequency table, and then over here write the gaps and say like my first bin is zero to 500, and then the next is, um, 500 to 599 and then the next one is 600 to 699 and so on and so forth so this is just basically a way to get these horizontal labels to be what you want them to be all right um, the other thing I wanted to talk about in this is I wanted to do a confidence interval so I'm going to come to a new page here and I'm going to do a confidence interval so to do a confidence interval it's actually really easy you want to go to data, data analysis, and I want descriptive statistics. My input is, let's do weekly income for this. And I have a label and I have an output. I'm going to dump it right here. 
and I want to do summary statistics and confidence level for the mean. And we're always going to hang at this 95%. That's kind of like a standard confidence level. And then we just hit OK. And what we get then is we get the descriptive statistics with an extra line at the bottom. And for our sake, if all I really care about is a confidence level, I really just need the mean and the number next to confidence level. Now, this isn't the confidence level. This is the mean. This is actually your relative error. I put too many R's in there. That's an error. Uh, there we go, relative error. So basically, what this is going to give us is a confidence interval says, well, if I collected weekly income from 30 people, and I wanted to talk about what the weekly income range for a group of 3,000 people, I need to make an inference. I'd say that the 30 people I surveyed had an average weekly income of about $795. However, if I were to look about the population and ask about their weekly income, it might be near this, but it also might be plus or minus a certain amount. So if I was going to state a confidence interval based on this, the confidence interval at 95% would be 794.66 plus or minus 175.44. All right, so basically this is my point estimate, and this is my margin of error. That's my relative error. So then what I want to do is actually figure out a range for that. So I'm going to do my upper and my lower. And to get the upper value for the confidence interval, I'm going to hit equals. I notice an equal box up here. So I'm going to hit equals the mean plus the standard deviation. Mean plus standard deviation, I'm going to hit enter. And then for lower, I'm going to get equals the mean minus the standard deviation and hit enter. So my confidence interval is 794.66, which basically goes down to the 95% confidence interval would be 619 to 970 dollars. In other words, we're quite sure that the population mean for weekly income is between 970 and 619 dollars. That's what a confidence interval is. It's taking a point estimate, the mean you get from your sample, that's called the point estimate, and then giving you a range of error. So what we can say is I got an average of this, but I'm pretty sure the real average is somewhere between 970 and $619. That's it. That's all you need to know for confidence interval. That is all there is. Piece of cake. Um, I will leave you with two jokes today. Um, one for the weather. What do you get when you cross a snowman with a Dracula? Frostbite. You could probably see that one coming. Um, and the other one I want to tell you uh, made me giggle because I am Catholic. What do you call... A sleepwalking nun. A Roman Catholic. Rah, rah, rah. Get it? Roaming Catholic. A Roman Catholic. Ha, 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 ha. I know I'm not that funny. But hey, at least you listen to the end of the video. If you have questions, let me know. And you'll see more videos later.